Hey guys, my name is Vishwas and welcome to a brand new series on React Redux for beginners. In this introductory video, I will give you an overview of Redux and React Redux. In the rest of the series, we will dive deeper into the various concepts. Before we begin, I just want to let you know that I am assuming you know the fundamentals of React. You don't have to be an expert by any means, but the React fundamentals are absolutely required to get the most out of this series. If you are a complete beginner, I highly recommend you go through the React for Beginners series on my channel before you continue. In that playlist, I have covered in detail all the fundamental concepts in React. Once you are thorough with the basics, making sense of React with Redux is going to be much more easier. Alright, with that in mind, let's begin. First, let us go over the Redux library. What exactly is it? The definition from the documentation is that Redux is a predictable state container for JavaScript apps. To understand what this means, let's break it down into three parts. It is for JavaScript apps, it is a state container, and it is predictable. Let's take a look at each of these parts individually. The first part is that Redux is for JavaScript applications. And this is really important. Redux is not tied to React. It can be used with any UI library or framework such as React, Angular, Vue, or even with vanilla JavaScript. So if you have this mental model where Redux and React are tightly coupled, now is a good time to get rid of it. Instead, you should remember that Redux is a library for JavaScript applications. Next, let's move on to the second part. Redux is a state container. Now what do we mean by a state container? Well, it just means that Redux stores the state of your application. But what exactly do we mean by state of an application? Well, consider a React app. We have all learned about state of a component. For example, if we have a login form, the state of the component is simply an object that holds username, password, and a submitting flag to indicate the submit action happening in the background. If we had a list of users to display, the state of the component would be an object that contains an array of users. Extending on this knowledge, we can say that the state of an application is simply the state represented by all the individual components of that application. This includes the data and the UI logic. If your application is medium to large in size, the state of the application could be something like, is user logged in? What is their username? Their profile pic URL? A list of online users? Is a particular model opened? Is data being currently fetched? And so on. Redux will basically store and manage this application state. All right, that clears two thirds of the definition. Redux is a state container for JavaScript apps. The final part is that Redux is predictable. The question that comes to our mind is predictable in what way? Well, let's go back to the discussion we had a minute ago. Redux is a state container. And in any JavaScript application, the state of the application can change. For example, in a to-do list application, a to-do item can go from being in a state of pending to a state of completed. In Redux, all such state transitions are explicit and it is possible to keep track of them. In other words, with Redux, the changes to your application's state become predictable. So again, what is Redux? Redux is a predictable state container for JavaScript apps. The definition also pretty much answers the question, why would you want to use Redux? If you want to manage the state of your application in a predictable way, Redux can help you. 
Now, after listening to this overview of Redux, I understand if you're slightly confused. You might be wondering, why would we want to use Redux in a React application? Components in React have their own state. Why do we need another tool to help manage that state? Let me help you understand the answer to that question. Consider a React application. The application may consist of several components nested at various levels. Let's pick a component at the end of the component tree. Component A. This component has an input field to accept the user's name which is stored locally within the component state. Seems pretty straightforward. Now, it just so happens that a sibling component, which is component B, needs to display the username. Now, how do we send the username from component A to component B? We have to do it the React way, which is lifting the component state. The state will now be managed in the parent component C which then provides data and methods as props to component A and component B. Now what if a few days down the road, you find out that component D also needs to display the username. The solution again is to lift the state up. The state is now managed in parent component E. The very next day, all of a sudden, you find out that you also need to display the username in component F. Now, the only choice you have is to lift the state to app component. As you see, managing state in React is definitely not as simple as it seems. And to make things worse, we have a new requirement. We need to display the username in component G. The state is maintained in the app component and has to be passed as props through all the intermediate components. Depending on the levels of nesting, this again can be a frustrating task. Not to mention the fact that components which don't need the username prop still have to be aware of it. In the component tree, if component A now updates the username, that update goes all the way till app component, which then starts passing down the updated value as prop to the other components. So in React applications, where you have a considerable number of components which share some common state, state management could become troublesome. This is where Redux will help you out. With Redux, your state is contained outside your components. If component A wants to update the state, it communicates with the state container. The state container updates the state in a predictable manner and then sends this value to only those components that are in need of that value. How does this happen? Well, we will understand that when we start coding. At this point, if you are familiar with React, you might be thinking that the problems we just discussed can be solved by other means as well. We have React context, which allows you to consume props deep within the component tree without having to manually pass it down through all the intermediate components. And if you're now familiar with hooks, you might also be thinking use context plus use reducer can pretty much do what Redux has to offer. Well, you're right in thinking that way, but what I want you to remember is that Redux version 1.0 was released in August 2015 when these were not available. I will talk more about this towards the end of the video, but for now, I want you to remember that Redux will help manage state in our React application. All right, the final part to understand is about the React Redux package. By now, you should be aware that we have React, which is a UI library, and we have Redux, which is a state management library. They both work independently of each other. To directly use Redux in your React application is a bit confusing and also difficult. That is the reason we have the React Redux package. React Redux is the official Redux UI binding library for React. What we mean by that is React Redux 
offers a couple of functions that will help you connect your React application with Redux. So if you're using React and Redux together, you should also use React Redux to bind the two libraries. Okay, let me quickly summarize the points we have learned so far. React is a library used to build user interfaces. Redux is a library for managing state in a predictable way in JavaScript applications. React Redux is a library that provides bindings to use React and Redux together in an application. With this introduction, I hope you now have a slightly better idea of what we are going to be learning in this series. Now, before we proceed with the next video, there are a couple of points I want to discuss. But it is something I speak out of my own experience, so I hope it is of some help to you guys. Alright, the first point. According to me, the most basic mistake you can do is learning Redux and React in parallel. If you're watching this video and you don't know all the fundamental concepts in React, please don't proceed. You're only going to confuse yourself even more. You're going to find it difficult to draw a line between what is done in React and what is done in Redux. Second point, is React with Redux still relevant? If you read through some of the articles on React, you're going to find several mentions where use context plus use reducer can replace what Redux can do for you. From what I've seen, this was what was talked about when the context API was introduced, but Redux continued to be popular. And I personally feel the same way even after hooks have been introduced. At this moment, I don't think there is a 100% replacement to what Redux and its ecosystem offers. Third point, should you really learn React with Redux if it is going to stay relevant for only a short duration in the future? Personally, I think you should learn Redux even today. The patterns that you're going to learn will help you write better code even after you stop using Redux. Apart from that, a more common reason would be to crack that interview which requires knowledge in Redux. Companies have existing projects that make use of Redux, so it is only logical that they look for people with experience in Redux. Fourth point, should Redux be added to all your React applications? Or to rephrase it, which is also the most common question you find out there, when should I use Redux in my React application? Now this is a difficult question to answer. You could use it in an application that has just five components, but does it add any value is the question. Typically, you would want to use Redux in an application that has a couple different routes and there are considerable number of components that need to share state. But again, there is no set rule for this. So I can only tell you that at some point in time, you're going to find yourself struggling trying to manage the state in your application. That is the time you can go for Redux. Fifth point, Redux is one of those libraries that you need to go through twice or three times just to wrap your head around the basic terminology. You're also going to find out that there is a good amount of boilerplate code that you need to write just to get it up and running. My advice for you is to not worry if you're not able to pick up on some concepts right away. Give it some time, go through the videos multiple times and things will eventually start to make sense. Sixth and final point is about the course structure. I've mentioned it earlier, but Redux can work independently without the need for React. And to be able to use Redux with React, it is essential that you first understand the various concepts in Redux itself. So in this series, for almost the entire first half, we are going to deal with just the Redux library. We are not going anywhere near React. Once you understand the different concepts in Redux, we will then see how to bind those concepts to a React application. Alright, with these points in mind, let's start off with Redux in the next video.
Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next one.